It's just some man. What the bird is barbecuing. G'day, jabronis. It is the bird back with you again, and welcome here to our uh, playoffs game. Yeah, we actually made the playoffs. Um, Tampa Bay Rockets, as you know, went through the regular season seven and zero with a plus twenty eight differential. Absolutely smashed it, and now we have made it into playoffs. And obviously, this isn't going to be easy. The way the playoffs works is um, on our uh, division side, we have myself here against Daniki, coach of the Rosa Radenborg. If we win this game, we play the winner of Mono, Tempe Lux Rays, against Eric Ashford Kai and the AS Rowlets. And then you got the guys on the other side, and basically, um, all the guys on this side, um, in my division that I've already played, we all battle for top spot to be representative for um, <laughs> the final match against their top representative. So, my aim is obviously to be the representative for uh, this side, because obviously I've had very very strong season and I like to keep that going and in order to keep that going we are going to have to unfortunately go through Daniki. I really like Daniki and I were really good mates we, we love Yu-Gi-Oh together that's something special and he is a really nice guy and he had a really good season like uh, he had a couple of tough losses but he he has a very st <laughs> what I say is a scary team I'm not lying so when I came to my prep this week there was one big thing that was uh, niggling me the thing that you'll find about team Boone guys and I find out a lot is you have to try and patch as many weaknesses as you can, but there are going to be matchups where you're not able to patch every single weakness. And for me this week, I just couldn't patch um, webs. Uh, if my opponent got webs up, it was just a little bit annoying for me because it would allow. Um, I, obviously, I'm a scarf circuitry, so it would allow most of his team, or uh, Silvali, Salazzle, Lopani, Gavantula, all to outspeed me, which is annoying. A scarf or Canyon would outspeed me, so that just wasn't ideal. So my basic plan from the get go was prevent webs as soon as possible with pressure, but regardless, let's just break down the team. So we have a uh, Scarf Zergatry, the same set I basically brought against him last time, this time I am speed creeping uh, Togekiss, just in case he brings Scarf Togekiss to do with that. I'm running um, Carmine Mew, this time, uh, last time I ran uh, Stealth Rocks instead of Carmine, but I really like Carmine as a matchup, I believe it was Carmine with a Psychic plus, um, I believe it was Shadow Ball just for things like the Ladias. No, it was Ice Beam. Uh, Psychic plus Ice Beam just basically covers his entire team. Firing Fortress, but Fortress can be weakened down the rest of my team. Uh, running Special Offensive Sceptile, because as you can see by his team, he has absolutely no switch in to Special Offensive Sceptile, which is just phenomenal. It's just it's a fun time. Bringing a very similar Toxapex set to last time, only this time I decided to replace Infestation with Light Screen. Now the reason for that is because I knew that my Toxapex could handle any Volcanion set but sub, and I would require taking far too much away from my special defense on HP to be able to break a Volcanion sub if it's max HP, so I decided to go with Light Screen, because that way even if he sets up a sub, I can get a Light Screen up and then go after things like my Seismitoad, uh, my Alolan Muck, my Mew, and they can deal with Volcanion just fine under the Light Screen. So that was, you know, pretty solid there. Seismitoad is a bulky speedy kind of variant, like I'm bulky enough that I can take hits from Megalop, uh, Salazzle and all that, but I'm also fast enough that I can outspeed Volcanion and hit it with an Earthquake. I'm running the Rindo Berry because I do feel like I have Energy Ball from Galvantula, Hidden Power Grass from Salazzle, or the uh, potential Solar Beam, um, or Power Herb Solar Beam, well not Power Herb Solar Beam, but the Bloom Doom from Volcanion could be likely. Um, it is going to be pretty scary if he does have it, but definitely like the Salazzle set was the best for the matchup for sure, and then Alolan Muck this time around, I had Assault Vest, but I was just running a physically defensive Assault Vest set. This is basically to mitigate the DD Latios that he brought last time, just in case he brought it again, I would be able to deal with it. Um, it was a roll for Z Earthquake to kill me from plus one Adamant, so that was nice. Plus what I could just do is go out to Seismic put on Mew on the Z Earthquake, take it like a champion, because they're both quite physically bulky, and then Muck would be able to handle it from there, so... I basically had answers to a lot of his stuff. I was fully expecting Rhyperior, um as a way of stopping my Zerkatry, because he doesn't really have a lot for Zerkatry in this game. Again, also not a lot for Sceptile, but at the same time, very scary offense uh, for sure. The big threat for me, like I said, was Galvantula. I can't let that thing start off and just ruin me. So uh, we're going to kick this thing off as he leads with Silvali and I lead with Muck. Now on turn one, I saw it was a Silvali Electric. Um, definitely wasn't given away by the fact that he said it said Electrum on there. And the way I saw it was, if he's a Silvali Electric, I know multi attacks not going to do anything to me. And he also knows that I'm a little old and muck. Like, I'm pretty darn bulky. I'm designed I can take, like, plenty of hits. And he has other mons that can come in and do a bit of work here. So I fully expected him to switch turn one with, like, a parting shot. And I figured, well, I might as well just go for knockoff. 
try and get some damage off, and he actually goes for the SD, as I'm going to go for knockoff and actually catch him with the poison touch. So Muck strikes again with that, but realizing that he's a uh, Savali Electric, I'm just going to straighten my size with him because he goes multi attack, and it turns out the other move on his set. Oh, also, big news here. I actually outspeed the Silvali with the fact that I speed creep Volcanion, so for some reason, I don't know what he was trying to speed creep, but that works out well for me, so... Sorry, what I was going to say there was that, um, it turns out his Silvali set was Swords Dance, Multi-Attack, Crunch, and Parting Shot, which meant that Seismitoad basically walled his Silvali just fine with the bulk that I have, and the fact that I can just go for Stab Earthquakes, um, doing ridiculously good damage, it was just a really good position for me to be in. But this is a position I did not want to be in. He has Sentin Galvantula, and my Seismitoad is in. I can't really damage it that badly because of uh, my stat drops, but the big thing is that um, he is damaged by rocks. What that means is that uh, if he's sashed, it's not going to work out for him, uh, which is really, really nice. That was the thing. That's why I led Muck, because if you led Galvantula, I could go for the combination of knockoff plus pursuit and knock out Galvantula by turn two, and it would mean he has webs up, but I could have played around that, because as you can see, like even Muck does a number to his team. So. Regardless, I'm like, okay, this is it, it's probably going to set up webs, but you know what, I'm going to take advantage, I'm going to go into my log and map. And he actually goes to Infestation, that was kind of wild, I kind of get it because of the parting shot, but at the same time, um, it was an interesting play for sure. I can see this being a really nice move, like, to catch uh, Toxapex and maybe Seismicode, like, it was cool, but for my Lord and Muck, because I am a Soul Vest, it's not going to be doing that much. Like, Thunder, as you can see, is doing, like, 29%, does get the para, which sucks, as I'm going to go for a knockoff here. The knockoff is expert build, which is like basically telling me that he probably doesn't have um, webs. Because I would just run like against my team with my limited hazard removal. Like I would just run sash webs. If you're gonna if you're gonna choose to run webs on this sash webs, there's definitely something who's just running a more offensive Galvantula. And I'm gonna try and catch him with the pursuit on this turn um, because I, I figured he might switch. And unfortunately, I get fully paralyzed, and I'm like, ah, oh, well, okay, that's fine. Like it didn't really matter too much because obviously. Um, at this point, he could have died to rocks, but then I was like, well, actually, well, well, I figured, actually, the reason why I was annoyed was because if I had done that and then Fortress spun, Galvantulus would have been dead. I expected Fortress to spin here. He actually chooses not to, and I'm going to take full advantage and go for this Fire Blast, which, yes, I'm going to say it now, the crit mattered, but you know what? I got fully powered on that one, so we'll call it even. I'm going to preserve my luck because I think he may go into Volcanion, as he is going to go straight for the sub. Interesting play against a paralyzed muck, but each their own. He's going to go for Earth Power, eat up my Stricker Barrier, does absolutely zero to me, as the Light Screen does go up. And at this point, I'm like, well, I've got this on lock now, I'm going to go into my Mew. I don't really play this Mew very well, as you're going to see, he's going to go for the Earth Power, and under Light Screen, it does absolutely diddly squat. So basically, see his entire move set. I'm going to go for the Carbine, and here's where he removes his final move, the Toxic, but he forgets that Synchronize works behind a substitute because it is a noise, uh, a sound activator ability. And what this means is I can go for Psychic to break the sub here. As he's going to go for Flamethrower, and I'm in a position where I can basically just whittle down this Volcano into Rocks range. And here's though where I make a bit of a misplay. Well, I don't think it's a misplay anymore. Uh, what I should have done there, guys, is gone for a Roost. Uh, reason being is because I was taking a fair bit of Toxic damage, and this was my primary check to low punny at this point in time. So, would have been really nice to uh, potentially uh, go for a Roost there. Would have been let, let me take a low punny hit, although he could have gone for Fake Out if he had it, plus Return. Plus the poison damage would have been bad for me, but I also could have just gone hard out to the side of the toad. Preserve Mew at a much better range of HP. It would have been at like 77% after the toxic damage. That could have been a lot better for me in that situation, but I chose to try and take out the threat that is Volcanion. But at the same time, it's poisoned. It's at 62.5, which means that my tox specs was going to wall it all day. So that was a misplay on my part, and it is going to come back to cost me, as I'm going to let my Mew go down here to the return. I was actually Cobberberry Mew, just because... Pontre was a big threat, but I'm going to go to um, RBD, and you're going to see here, the power-up punch, that only does 21%, so I'm able to eat that, go for an EQ, and that damage is really important, because what I noticed was he wasn't a Scarf Volcanion, he's an Electrium, uh, uh, Electric Memory uh, Zavali, he wasn't Scarf Galvantula, he's got Mega Lob, and so in the back of my mind I was like, if that isn't a Scarf Salazzle, all I realistically need to do is weaken the low punny, and Zerkatry can just win. So I go out to my Muck, as he goes to the high jump, he knocked me out, and I'm like, fair enough. Gets an unnecessary crit, but I'm at this point, I'm like, okay, well, Zerkatry can just knock this thing straight out. I was fearful of Quick Attack plus Scarf Salazzle, but I get my Beast Boost, and he goes out to Silvali, and I'm like, okay, is this is this over? And Zerkatry's just going in, boys. It is going in. He goes into Salazzle, I'm like, well, if this is Scarf, then we still got a game, but it was not Scarf. We were able to avoid that, 
I couldn't play it safe, but at that point I lived any hit from Scarf Salazzle, as I am able to clean up the rest of his team with Zerkatry. And guys, we get another 4 0 win. That means that currently, through playoffs, uh, we are we got our first win in playoffs. Overall for the season, we are 8 0 with a plus 32 differential, still averaging a 4 0 every game. And I mean, Danaki played well, but the fact that he didn't get up rocks was, uh, sorry, uh, the fact that he didn't get up the webs was a huge factor. If he did have them, I probably would have got them up because. It would have meant the Zerkatry couldn't outspeed Low Punny, and if I couldn't outspeed Low Punny, then Low Punny at plus one basically ran through my team, guys. If he had got webs up at that point in time with Galvantula, there was a good chance of a loss. However, I will say that if webs were up, I definitely would have been more protective with Mew. Once I knew Galvantula was dead, um, I was a lot more aggressive with Mew because I knew that Zerkatry and Sceptile could outspeed Low Punny. If I had known they couldn't, I definitely would have preserved my Mew a lot better to deal with the Low Punny. And on that turn that I went for the light screen, I would have just gone hard out to my Seismitoad. As, like I said, I had the Earthquake to break the sub, and I had the bulk to be able to take an HP Grass, especially under a light screen. So, anyway, GG Danaki. Uh, go check out his channel, guys. You know, I played him earlier in the season, but he's a really great guy. And uh, we go on now to the semi final match, and I'm gonna let you guys know now we are gonna be playing Monotui. Now, obviously, we 6 0 Mono last time, but that was obviously. He wasn't trying very hard, we were also kind of just, I mean, we were, we were kind of trying hard, just because I wanted to get 7-0. But yeah, uh, it's going to be a really important match for us. Basically, the top three from Majors go through. So if we can beat Mono and get to the finals, then um, we will automatically be in Majors, which is awesome. If we do lose, we do have a second chance, but I don't really want that to happen. I want to just get the win and, you know, see the Tampa Bay Frogadiers go into the majors. So if you're hyped for that and you're a fan of the Frogadiers, then go like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to comment down below how you thought the battle went, you know, if you're enjoying this season for sure. And also let me know in the comments actually what your favorite um, moment from the season has been so far. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Hope you have enjoyed. My name is The Bird, and I'm out.